In such a manipulating world of today, there is a man that preaches and teaches the whole counsel of God with emphasis on societal transformation, personal development and empowerment. Reverend Tari Hudson Ekio is a senior pastor of the Rest Place, coordinator of the Global Bishopric and currently the acting director of administration of Church of God Mission Global. He is the founder of the Professional Empires Network, a member of the Board of Regents of Benson at Dahosa University, a guest facilitator at the Rama Bible Training Center and several other boards. He is the coordinator of the renowned Port Harcourt City Help Fair and Port Harcourt Knowledge Development Center. Tari doubles as a consultant environmentalist and a lecturer in the Tertiary Institute in River State, Nigeria. He is a member of the Chartered Institute of Waste Management, Royal Society of Chemistry, Society for Applied Microbiology, and International Environmental Society. Tari is happily married to Regina and they are both blessed with three lovely children. You are about to experience a world-transforming and life-changing session as we receive Reverend Tari Hudson Ekio. Tari Ekio. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just keep standing for a moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you are having a great time in the International Youth Summit? How many of you are having a great time? Praise the Lord. I, I believe that tonight will even be greater. Tomorrow will even be greater in the name of Jesus. I want to say that we, ha we are privileged. Every one of you, look at yourself and say, I'm privileged. You know why? Because you have access to information. The church does not have a power problem. Thank you. The church does not have a power problem. We have the power of God at our disposal. The church does not have a vision problem. We are building people into leadership with a global passion, deeply rooted in Christ. The church does not have an anointing problem. Praise the Lord. We are not in search of the anointing. The Archbishop told us that focus on Christ for anointing, for increase, does not mean that we are looking for anointing. We are already anointed. But we want that anointing to count for something in our lives. And that is increase. So we don't have an anointing problem. The challenge of the church is knowledge. The church has a knowledge problem. And that is the gap that conferences like this are designed to bridge. The gap of knowledge. It is not, you are not looking for something. You are discovering what you already have. Praise the Lord. I told you, where is that my friend that did the illustration with me the other day? Come again, come again. Praise God. I hope it's not my money you used to buy this new fine. <laughs> You're looking good. Praise God. All right. So I told you the other day when we did this illustration, I brought an envelope. You remember this envelope? Looks familiar. All right. Praise God. So today's audio will not take it. <laughs> Let's settle the rules of engagement now. All right. So, you remember Jesus? That when everything that God has is in Christ, 
So when he gave us Jesus, he gave us everything. What this means is that you have everything. We are not looking for anything, we have it. The challenge is knowing what you have and how to engage what you have. That's the challenge. And that's what this conference is designed to achieve, to help us bridge that gap of knowledge. Look at Pauline prayers in scriptures. Have you taken time to study the prayers of Paul in the Bible? I don't know where some of us got the kinds of prayers we pray. Look at the Bible. The Bible is our, if the Bible is our example, where did you get all those kinds of prayers you pray about? Those prayer points. I like what Dr. Apoki said this morning. If, you're, if your destiny can enter pot, then you are a vegetable. Praise the Lord. I've been following and I've been blessed. Praise the Lord. Those kinds of prayer points. Go to the Bible. Look at the prayer points of Paul. Look at Ephesians. Look at Colossians. Look at Philippians. See Paul praying so that you can learn how to pray properly. It is not the excitement and the, that makes your prayers matter. Praise the Lord. God will not do what he has already done, no matter how much you cry in prayers. He will not do what he has already done. God will not do what you should do, no matter how much you pray. Those are two prayers that God will not answer. He will not do what he has already done. So instead of praying for God to do something, first find out whether he has done it already. Because he will not do what he has already done. Praise the Lord. Now, you must also understand that faith is a word of responsibility. Faith brings with it responsibility. Praise the Lord. And so you must understand that there is, you have a responsibility. You have a part to play. You have a role in this business. Praise the Lord. So God will not do what? Tell somebody what I said. Two prayers that God will not answer. Can you tell your neighbor? He will not do what he has already done. He will not do what you are supposed to do. Praise the Lord. Those are the two prayers that God will not answer. If you like you fast from now till next year, those two prayer points God will not answer because he's already settled. Praise the Lord. So he gave us everything when Paul prayed. Paul's prayers emphasize knowledge. That the Lord will give us knowledge and understanding. That he will enlighten us. That's the content. That was the content of Pauline prayers. Knowledge. Because that's the key. Once you know it, you can then apply it and then see the results. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody said something. Listen to this quote. He said, he said, Change will not be given to you sometimes. Sometimes you have to demand for change. Do you agree with that? But what if I told you that was said by a bus conductor? It was a bus conductor that said it. Does that change the meaning? Of course. He's talking about your change when you pay transport. He says change will not be given to you sometimes. You have to demand for change. Conductor, give me my change. Now, some people are looking for change, like the bus conductor, just to survive. But listen to me, that's not who you are. We are not looking for something to survive on. We are looking to make a difference, to make a mark. Praise the Lord. Listen to me, with all that God has invested in you, you cannot afford to remain small. You cannot be average. You cannot end up a beggar. Your mindset should not be poor. Poverty is not in your pocket, it's in your mind. Your mindset should never be poor. You must think big. I was telling a group of people yesterday, I said to them, if you want to live long, plan, have a big vision that will span through a lot of years. Because when your work is done, you go home, right? So plan for your work to be very big so that it will not finish when you are 100 years. 
Think of something big that you want to achieve. Don't settle for little things. I always say this, you are too loaded to fail. God invested too much in you for you to be ordinary, just to be walking about as an ordinary person. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, I want to do a little exercise and, and then we will go. But look at this. Jesus, you have everything. Do you know that he said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you? What are the conditions? Unconditionally. God will never leave you, he will never forsake you. That means every moment of your life, you have all that you need to succeed. That's why the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? You are with me. I am conscious of your presence. I have everything I need. I have what it takes to excel. I have what it takes to succeed. Don't let anybody tell you you are not good enough. You have everything it takes to succeed. So when you leave this place, walk with confidence. Tell somebody, walk with confidence. Go out and make a difference. Let's hear of something big about you. Praise the Lord. Find a place where you can be king. Find a place where you can be king. Build your own kingdom and become king. Some of you, you must build business empires. Somebody hearing me. Don't be satisfied with where you are today. Make a difference. Your name has to be heard. Your name has to be heard. You can either be the ones complaining about bad government or be the government they are complaining about. Choose your own. You can be the one complaining about all these rich people, they are proud. Or you be the rich people they are complaining about. You make your choice. Praise the Lord. Sit down for a moment. I'll show you something. Thank you. Give me my envelope. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. I'll show you something. Just do something. Let's do an exercise and then I'll share a few things. I'll be done. I just have a few minutes to talk today. I think um, just to challenge you to develop your personal increase plan. That's the topic I've been given to work on. So I have a few slides I'll show you. But let's do a little exercise. Um, Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 verse 3. Acts chapter 9 verse 3. If you can display that for me quickly. Acts 9.3, and I want us to look at it together. Um, I would like you to be ag agile with the scriptures because I want us to do this. So can you read with me? As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. You know who we're talking about? Saul that became Paul. All right. Go on to the next verse. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me. Praise the Lord. Now, notice this. Three key things happened to him. The Bible says as he was going, he heard a voice, right? He saw a light, right? And he fell to the ground. All right? You notice that? So the first question I will ask you, I want to ask you three questions and I want you to answer quickly. In this experience, in this encounter, how many people Heard the voice. One person. How many of you agree? Just Paul heard the voice. Praise the Lord. Go to verse 7. Put verse 7 there. Read it with me. And the man which journeyed with me stood speechless. So how many people heard the voice? Everybody heard the voice. Do you agree with me? All right. How many people saw the light? Only one person. Everybody had the voice, but one person had the light. How many of you I mean, saw the light? Right? All right, go to chapter 22, verse 9. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verse 9. Can you read it with me? And they that were with me indeed saw the light, and they were afraid. Praise the Lord. So how many of them fell to the ground? Only one. So everybody saw the light, everybody heard the voice, but only one fell to the ground. 
How many of you agree with me? <laughs> now you don't know what to agree with again. Praise the Lord. Okay, the answer is in Acts chapter 26 verse 14. Acts 26 verse 14. So they all, and when we were all, So on the road to Damascus, how many people saw the light? How many people heard the voice? How many people fell to the ground? But only one man said he wasn't disobedient to the heavenly call. Listen to me, everybody will have the same experience, but you must learn to take responsibility for your outcomes. Everybody is going through this same conference. Everybody going through this same conference, listening to the same message, but not everybody will have the same results. You must take responsibility for your results. Let's have the slides on the, on the screen and just go through. Um, I just wanted to put that out there, but let's go straight to what we have for tonight in the next 15 minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let your word bring light and understanding. Let Jesus be glorified in Jesus' name. Now I use the word anointed for increase because you have been anointed already. Can you tell somebody I'm anointed? Tell somebody I'm a success. Tell somebody I'm a victor, not a victim. Praise the Lord. Because you remember I told you that the believer is on defense mode, not attack mode. Because you already have, you are just keeping, preserving. Your responsibility is to keep what you have, to use what you have. You already have it, so we are not going in search of it. You are anointed, so it's time to increase. Praise the Lord. Go to the next slide and let's look at Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 11. Now, when we put this up, we will read it in the message translation. I want you to read the slides, read the scriptures to your neighbor. The first thing you will learn there is to lead yourself. Learn to lead yourself. Tell somebody, learn to lead yourself. All right, I hope this will be okay. All right, let's... I have the scriptures on the slide, so we can just use the slide. Stay on the slide. I have the scriptures there. I want you to read it from the, from the slide. We'll use um, the message translation and read. All right, let's read it. As you are reading, tell your neighbor, just as if you are telling your neighbor this. When you are feeling lazy, come and learn a tale. Go on, learn a lesson from the tale of the ant. Yes? Hold on there. Ask your neighbor, are you the lazy bone? All right, come learn, go on. Come learn from the example of the ant and enter into wisdom. Go on. The ants have no chief. No boss, no manager, no one has to tell them what to do. Go on. You see them working and toiling all summer, all summer long, stockpiling their food in preparation for winter. Go on. So wake up, tell somebody. Sleepy head. How long will you lie there? When will you wake up and get out of bed? Go to the next slide. If you keep nodding off and thinking, I'll do it later, or say to yourself, I'll just sit back a while and take it easy, watch what will happen. Just watch how the thing goes. By making excuses, you will learn what it means to go without. Go on. Poverty will pounce on you like a bandit and move in as your roommate for life. Did anybody say God forbid? It's not God forbid though. It's you that will forbid it tonight. Because God has done what God will do. I always tell people when he said, when, when God said, the Bible says God rested on the seventh day, it's because he finished his work. There's nothing else to do. He wasn't tired, but there was no other thing to do. He finished his work of creation. When Jesus said, it is finished, work was done. God has done what God will do. So it's not God that will forbid poverty right now. It's you and I that will forbid it. Praise the Lord. Keep my slides on, please. Let's, let's go on. 
So the first thing you must learn from the ant is self-leadership. You must learn to lead yourself. When you get to that point where nobody has to wake you up, where nobody has to tell you when to read for exams, where you take responsibility for your own outcomes, where your prayer life is not an excuse, you know that I am praying, but I also have responsibilities. Where you set targets and you take responsibility for achieving those targets. Self-leadership. But you know the problem a lot of church people have? We like to trade blames. We like to blame the devil. But the devil has been defeated. We like to blame everybody else. I've heard people say this church, they don't help people. Who is the day that will help the people? Why are you not the one helping the people? Are you not part of the church? So it's time to take responsibility. Tell somebody take responsibility. Nobody should be held accountable for where you are, where you get to tomorrow. I tell people this. If today you are poor and broke and you are nobody, no, no problem. But let's never catch you there tomorrow. Where you are tomorrow, I mean today, may not be your fault, but if you are still there tomorrow, it's your fault. You must take responsibility to stand up and move away from where you presently are. The spirit of excellence is not the spirit of perfection. Excellence is consistent improvement. So excellence doesn't say you have to be perfect. It says that if you are here tomorrow, you must be somewhere else. If you are here today, you must be somewhere else tomorrow. You must be consistently improving. You must be consistently making progress. By the next, by next year, when we have Megacon, we should not find you at the same level. Somebody say amen. amen. There must be some results. As a, because of this conference, there must be some results that you should display, something you should show off. Hallelujah. So you must be... Deliberate about your results, and that's what um, self-leadership is about. I have some definitions of self-leadership on that slide. Self-leadership is the practice of intentionally influencing your th thinking, your feeling, and actions towards your objectives. So you are deliberately influencing everything you do towards your objective. That means you have set objective, this is where I want to be by this time next year, and you are deliberately influencing your thinking, your actions, and everything you do in that direction so that you can achieve your results. Tell somebody, be deliberate. Life is not an accident. You must be deliberate about what you want to become and work towards achieving it. Somebody else said... Self-leadership is to serve as the chief, chief, the captain, and CEO of your own life. That's Peter Drucker. You must serve as the chief, the captain, and the CEO of your own life. Take responsibility. Brian Tracy defines it as your ability to set goals and take full responsibility for those goals. Take full responsibility. That this is where I want to be, and I will be deliberate about getting there. I will not wait for magic to happen. I will take bold steps. Use the woman with the issue of blood as a, a case study that she said, if I touch the hem of the, his garment, I know I will be made whole. And then she went back to her room and slept. Is that what happened? No, she went out and acted upon what she believed. I always define faith as, I say faith is not just what you believe, faith is what you do with what you believe. The steps you take because of what you believe. How many of you believe that you will succeed wherever you go? How many of you believe that you will prosper? How many of you believe that your hands are blessed? That whatsoever you lay your hands to do will prosper. How many of you believe? If you believe that, it will show in your actions. It will show by your actions. You will lay your hands to do something because you believe that if I lay my hands to do something, it will prosper. 
So your actions will show what you believe. What you say will not necessarily display what you believe. But what you do will always display what you believe. So I want to challenge somebody here tonight. It's time to lead yourself. It's time to lead yourself. How many of you talk to yourself? How many of you advise yourself? How many of you sit down with yourself like the prodigal son? Call yourself and say, when hope is talking to hope, say hope, sit down. Let's have a conversation. How many of you talk to yourself? You must learn to lead yourself. You must learn to have a conversation with yourself. Ask yourself questions. Challenge yourself. Praise the Lord. Go on with the slides, please. The second thing you must do, number one, learn to lead yourself. Number two, you must develop a personal increase plan, what I call a PIP, a personal increase plan. Can you say that with me, personal increase plan? You must have a personal increase plan. Increase will not be accidental. Some people are believing that one day somebody will knock on your door and say, God told me to give you 10 million naira. It is possible. Isn't it possible? It's possible. But it might just happen to one person in a million. The other 999,999 people will have to find other, find other options. Don't put all your plans on chance. Say something will happen one day. How many of you are believing to be millionaires? And billionaires. How many of you? I am, so don't be ashamed to say you are. But you must be deliberate about it. You must have a plan in place. Your plan should not be that by chance somebody will leave something for you. You must have a deliberate plan, a personal increase plan. What does your personal increase plan look like? Let me help you. Let's look at it together. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 5, you will see the scripture says, the plants of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. I will skip all of the slides and go to straight to the personal increase plan. Just keep up to number one, your personal increase plan. Skip the slides, just go straight to the personal increase plan. Go on. All right. Go on. Okay, stay there. Number one, you set goals. Set goals. Do you have a picture of your future designed and pasted somewhere in your room? Do you have a picture of the future you want to walk into? You must create, you must design the, the future you want to see. You must see it first before you get there. God said to Abraham, look, as far as your eyes can see, you must see it first and then walk towards it. So the first thing is to set goals. Be deliberate about your goals. Where do I want to see myself? There are short-term goals, mid-term goals, and long-term goals. You can start with this year. By the end of this year, where do I want to find myself? You can have short-term goals for two years. You can have mid-term goals for five years. You can have long-term goals beyond five years. You can say, this is my plan. For the next two years, this is what I want to be. I have discovered, Reverend Harvey, that there is nothing you cannot become in four years. Four years is enough time to become anything you want to become in this world, including president of this country. Four years is enough time to become anything you want to become. Four years. So I like people having a four-year plan. I say, to some, I say to people in church, I tell them, I said, if in four years you are not successful at something, I used to tell them then, you must be stupid, but they told me not to tell church people that they are stupid, so I don't say that anymore. But if you are not successful at something in four years, then you need to hold yourself accountable. Four years is enough time for you to be anything you want to be in this life. So what is your four-year plan? You must have a four-year plan. Where do I want to see myself in the next four years? What do I want to be doing in the next four years? What do I want to achieve in the next four years? Who do I want to be influencing in the next four years? Praise the Lord. Please make sure your whole plan, your goal in life is not to go abroad. That's not a goal. Are you hearing me? 
If your goal is to japa, it's not a goal. It's not a goal at all. Some people, your whole plan, the whole plan you have in your life is to go abroad. When you get there, you will find out that that is your starting point when you arrive. Praise the Lord. So let that not be your plan at all. Let that not be your plan. I mean, if you want to go abroad, that's fine. We, we started, we did, we set up an immigration platform to help people give chair ideas on how to do legal migration. And that's fine if you want to go abroad. But let that not be your goal. Your life's goal, your life's ab ambition is to go abroad. God forbid. Tell somebody, God forbid. I would prefer that all of you are very successful here and you can go abroad any day you want to go and come back anytime you want to come. That's the best one. Than to go and become a second class citizen in another person's country. I will prefer that. Praise the Lord. I am not saying you shouldn't go abroad if you want to go. Be my guest. Praise the Lord. We pay rent uh, a month. One month's rent is about um, 720,000 naira equivalent. One month's rent. You are struggling with uh, 15,000 naira monthly rent. He said the things are hard in this country. The problem is not your location. Are you hearing me? You must be deliberate, have a personal increase plan. So set goals. Tell somebody set goals. Ask your neighbor, what is your target? Where are you going to? Where will you be in the next four years? Ask somebody. Where will you be in the next four years? In the next four years. God forbid that in the next four years you will still be calling people and say because they are successful they don't pick my call anymore. You must be so relevant that if you call and they miss your call they will call you back. You must be so important and relevant. You must be adding value. You must be the one people are looking for not the one looking for people. Somebody hearing me. Don't humiliate don't humiliate yourself by chasing people up and down chasing people everywhere and they make fun of you disgrace and embarrass you you must sit down and have a plan a deliberate plan so that in the next four years if they are identifying important people you will be mentioned praise the Lord tell somebody set a goal set up have a plan have a strategy Number two, identify your present competencies, especially those related to your goals. That means, what can I do now? What do I know how to do now? Identify your strengths. What can I do now? What skills do I have now? How many people know how to sow? How many people know how to farm? How many people know how to bake or cook what skills do I have now you must assess that so when you get done with this service after the service today go to your rooms take a piece of paper take a jotter and take number one what are my goals list them number two what can I do now what skills do I have now what skills do I have now there's no skill you skill set you need in this life that you cannot learn in four years there's no skill set you need in this world that you cannot learn in four years. So ask yourself, what can I do now? What are my competencies, my present competencies? What can I do now? Please tell your neighbor something you can do. Tell, tell somebody by your side one thing you can do. If it's hard for you to find something to say, it's a problem. What skills do you have now? Your present competencies. What can you do better than most people now? What can you do better than most people now? CYF, this is my prayer. I pray that our testimonies will change. There are two types of testimonies. There are those that will come and say, I got a job I didn't deserve. And then some people will 
go for interviews and they will say, I was even overqualified for the position. I, I have one friend that when he went for an interview was negotiating his salary. They asked him a question. Listen to this. It sounds arrogant, but because he knows his onions. They asked him in the interview some questions, and then he looked at them, all of them sitting in the, in the panel, and he said to them, he said, how will you know if I am right or wrong? Because none of you is as qualified as I am. He said, you will not, no, he said nobody in this panel has the certification that I have, so if I give you a wrong answer and you say I'm wrong, I can challenge you because you are not qualified to say that. So, so they cut the chase. They say, okay, okay, we agree. Let's negotiate. How much do you want to take? Some of you will begin to go to very short interviews. You know all those one hour, three hours interviews, a waste of time. You must build capacity so that when you come in, they know what you can do. All they're asking is, how much do you want to take? They asked him, how much do you want to take? He gave the figure. He mentioned this figure. You know who I'm talking about. He doesn't live far from you. <laughs> he he mentioned the figure, and they, they say even our MD doesn't end this amount. He said, then your MD is underpaid. <laughs> to cut a long story short, they gave him the job and the salary he asked for. That means the day he started working, that company was the highest paid staff up to the MD. Because he built capacity. Tell somebody, build capacity. So that people will find it impossible to say no to you. Get to the point where anyone who says no to you will be crying when they say so. Because they know what they are losing. They know what you are bringing to the table. I pray our testimonies will change. From the point where I just got a job I didn't even deserve. Because see, if you get a job you don't deserve, you don't know how to do the job, they just employed you, it's very likely they will fire you very soon. Because you will expose yourself at work. So build capacity. Tell somebody, build capacity. So when you go back, write number one, what are my goals? List the, your goals. And, and don't have too many goals. Find one thing that is critical, one thing that is important. Bishop Febas taught me this. When he talked about the story of David and Goliath, and all the women began to sing, Saul has slain his, and David has slain his. And then Bishop Feb said, do you know that Saul has been a man of war from his youth? All his life he had been killing people. Say, how many people did David kill? One. Yet they said it was equal to 10,000. Equal to 10,000. Bishop said, David did not just kill anything. He killed the right one. He killed the right one. So in setting your goals, find that one thing that if you fix it, every other thing will fall into place. Find that one thing. Because some people, when you list your goals for the year, you say, I want to buy a house, buy a car, build this, do this, pay this, pay rent. These are my goals. What you are saying in essence is that you want to make money. Because if you have money, you can take care of all of that. So you must focus. Look at what is that one thing. If I get it right, everything else will fall in place. So that you are not having a long list of goals. And by the middle of the year, you have forgotten half of them. You need to go back to your list to remember what you plan to achieve this year. So make sure your goals are straightforward. Find the one thing that if you get it right, everything else will fall in place. For some of you, it might be a good job. For some of you, it might be a good business to start up a good business. For some of you, it's to start kickstart your career. Kickstart your career. Start use, engaging your talents and your skills. What is that one thing that if you get it right, everything else will fall into place? That's how you set your goals. Not writing so many things, listing so many things. So what are your present competencies? You go back and write that. List them for yourself. What can I do now? Number three, what are my development needs? That means to achieve what I want to achieve, what do I need? What skills do I need? What do I need to know? If I want to be a billionaire, what do I need to know? If I want to be a minister of the gospel, what do I need to know? What skills do I need that I do not presently have? 
That's the next thing you look at. What are my development needs? What are the needs I have now? So you have looked at your skills. You have set your goals. You have looked at your present skills. And then you are looking at what do I need, what skills do I need to acquire to achieve my goal? Praise the Lord. I hope you know that the future of work is changing. How many of you know that? That the future of work is changing. That ICT is no longer a field of study. It is everybody's field of study. If you are here and you don't know, you don't have good ICT skills, you are excluding yourself from the future. Because the world is moving away. Very soon in, in our churches, in our offices, we will stop using paper. It's a waste of money. So if you, are not, if you don't have those skills, you need to begin to develop those skills. You must see where you are going and prepare for that journey. Prepare for that destination. Praise the Lord. Some of you who want to travel abroad, if you don't have good ICT skills, you will be at a disadvantage. Because even the primary school children are using computers for their assignments. Nobody talks to you. Nobody will talk to you to tell you this is what to do. This is how to do it. Thank God for Reverend Harvey. He's telling you to scan QR codes. That's where the world is going to. Nobody is giving you long notes. You just scan the code. You get in there. You sort yourself. Take care of yourself. The whole world is moving towards do it yourself. Nobody wants to do anything for anybody. So that sense of entitlement, when you want people to do things for you, you must kill it and begin to develop your skills, develop yourself. So what are the skills you need to be relevant in tomorrow's world? That's what you begin to look at. Praise the Lord. There are, there are jobs that will no longer be relevant in the future. But some of the things we despise will become very relevant. Every time you have resources, please find the opportunity to invest in agriculture. Because there will never come a time where we will stop eating. Praise the Lord. So if you can invest in agriculture, it's a good thing. You know the money in the bank, by tomorrow morning the value has dropped. By the time you wake up tomorrow, the amount of money you left in the bank without spending it would have dropped in value. So saving is not enough. Investment is what you should be thinking about. Build capacity. Tell somebody build capacity. So what skills do you need to acquire now? Self-leadership is you get up by yourself. Nobody chasing you. Because this is not a children conference. This is not Agape Force conference. This is young adults conference. That means you must take responsibility for your, your, your future, your outcomes. And I'm rounding up now. So what you will become is not up to me. It's not up to God. It's up to you. If you will be great, it's up to you because God has finished what God wants to do. God has designed us to be great. The rest is up to you. Build the skills you need. Tell yourself by yourself, I need to learn ICT skills. How many of you participated in the breakout sessions? Some of you were going to use that breakout session time as um, siesta time. I'm sure those people have gone. They didn't come this evening. Praise the Lord. Everybody here now is a good person. Find, take advantage of opportunities. Do you know that there are free causes, important causes online? There are platforms you can engage and get training for free. Some of them you pay when you want to print your certificate. But you've learned the skills, you've acquired the knowledge. Anytime you need to submit that certificate, you can pay and print it and submit. Develop yourself. Know your, your development needs right now. If I want to be the governor of my state, what skills, what competencies do I need to build to achieve that? And then you start working in that direction. I bet you, like I said the first day, if you have capacity, God will not hold it back from you. If you build capacity, God will not hold it back from you. If you are believing to be great, build capacity for greatness. We've always said this. The oil stopped flowing. 
because there were no more vessels. As long as you have room, God will fill it. As long as you build capacity, opportunities will come your way. Opportunities will come to those who are prepared for it. You are designed for greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. I know with all confidence, I know with all assurance that by this time next year, we will not have enough parking space. The last thing you must do is action plan. This is where I stop. Have an action plan. What do I do with my strength? And how do I improve my needs? And what do I do about my needs? Set a, put a time frame. Say from now till next year, I will do this, I will do this, and I will do this. I will use my skills. Whenever I'm called, Reverend Harvey, whenever I'm called to minister in a conference, I will sing my own song so that people will hear. I will put my strength forward. I will not walk about with a victim mentality, feeling like the world is against me. No one is against you. You can succeed. You can stand out. You can be great. I have great testimonies, but my time is up now, and I think I've said enough. I have great testimonies to share about young people, Christian Youth Fellowship members, who grew up in CGM and became great. So you are in the right place. You are in the right place, under the right atmosphere. There is nothing you want to achieve that you cannot achieve. The, the word in this conference has been superb. Do you agree with me? I've been following every speaker. Every speaker. And all our speakers are in-house. Church of God Mission, CGMI. Please celebrate Reverend Harvey for that. Celebrate Reverend Harvey for that. So, and the word has been top-notch. So you have no excuse. I will see you as CEOs. Not just CEOs of small businesses, but CEOs of companies that are making, that will make global impact. Some of you will go international in your business. You begin to supply to the US, supply to the UK, supply to Europe in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you will be mentioned in the news, on the news for good things. You'll be mentioned on the news. You've been listening to the news and hearing the names of people. Suddenly, your name will be announced. Because you will also be standing out. You will also be shining in the name of Jesus Christ. You will no longer be the one that is praying, God, let touch people to bless me. You will be the one God is touching to bless others. In the name of Jesus Christ. When people are complaining about the difficulty, difficulties in this nation, do you know that many people are making money from it? The Naira is crashing, the Naira is crashing. What of those who are earning in foreign exchange, foreign currency? Do you think they want the Naira to appreciate? If your salary is paid in, in dollars or pounds, will you want the Naira to appreciate? You want the exchange rate, you want it to be 2,000 Naira so that every dollar you get more money. So when there is problem, find opportunities. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes and help you to see the things you need to do. Help you to see the opportunities around you. Help you to grab the opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be a victim anymore because the Lord will position you to make a difference where you go. You will never again be ignored in the name of Jesus Christ because you will be relevant wherever you go. You will be important wherever you go in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that out of this place, the Lord will raise great people that will build churches. You will not borrow to build those churches. God will raise people that will, will support pastors and ministers in the name of Jesus Christ. Out of this congregation tonight, out of these people hearing my voice tonight, God will raise leaders that will bring change and bring transformation to this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. In 2023, you will be voting for people. By 2027, they should be voting for some of you in this place. They should be voting for some of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to position yourself. Begin to position yourself. We are made for greatness. You, you carry, you are of the seed of Archbishop Benson Idahosa. You cannot be small. You cannot be average. You cannot be poor. You cannot be broke. 
We are taking territories. We are taking over nations. We are taking over business empires in the name of Jesus Christ. As people are selling properties, you will be the one buying. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same place you were rejected, by the next time you appear, they will be begging you. They will be begging you because you have built capacity. They will realize that they made a mistake the first time. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you tonight. That the Lord will bless you. Give you ideas. Give you wisdom. Give you the ability to lead yourself. Take responsibility. And arrive at your destination. In the name of Jesus we pray. If you are the one that the next one that will be celebrated. Can you begin to celebrate Jesus? Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory.